Hi everyone, we are so excited to welcome you to our next, or our current online Bible study is starting today, Dangerous Prayers. My name is Melissa Taylor, I'm with Proverbs 31 Ministries, and joining me today, the president of Proverbs 31 Ministries, Lisa Turkers. Thank you, Melissa. And pastor and author of the study that we're, we're starting, Craig Rochelle. It's great yeah. to have you Thank with you, us. Thank you, Melissa and Lisa, and I just have to say, like, I am the number one guy fan of Proverbs 31 in the whole Yay. wide world. Thank like you. seriously, what you do is amazing. And on behalf of all the people that I love that you impact, um, what you do is incredibly important, mm -hmm. powerful, special, and uh, I'm honored to be with you guys. Thank well, you. Thank I've you loved so much. being friends with you and Amy for a long time and you've got daughters. And so it always excites me when I hear a father uh, encourage that uh, encourage us that the ministry matters because that that is our prayer that we not only impact women but we impact the families through the daughters and the next generations and even help shape some perceptions in families so thank you encouragement is a gift you yes. do well i, I, I want to be a leading voice um, as a man to empower women in ministry and leadership and business and and so um, what you do is is really building people's faith, and I, I just want to come along and cheer you on and keep going, keep doing it. Thank, Thank you. you. That means a lot. It really does, and we are celebrating your book. Mm -hmm. um, what a gift that you have given all of us in this book, Dangerous Prayers, and um, I love the subtitle too, because following Jesus was never meant to be safe. Right. That reminds me, hints of the uh, the C.S. Lewis Chronicles of Narnia and uh, mm -hmm. Aslan, yeah. and you know, we're not supposed to, uh, try to tame God, you yes. know, it's just to follow God. And it's just really um, quite a gift. So tell us about the cover. What's mm -hmm. the story? What's the symbolism? What's the meaning behind the cover of Dangerous Prayers? Well, what we wanted to do is, is really try to help people see that, that prayer is not just a safe, rote, God bless me, keep me safe, bless my food type of thing. And so on the, the cover, of course, you got the prayer hands and then we wanted, we put flames around it to kind of symbolize this, you know, like the flames kind of can represent the Holy Spirit, but also that these, these are fiery, gutsy, mm -hmm. raw, faith-filled prayers. Mm -hmm. And of course, the dark is supposed to be showing just a little bit of it. This is dangerous and mysterious. And so hopefully it's one that grabs your interest. And I, I know a lot of people feel sometimes insecure about their prayer life. Even Christians will be like, I don't know if it matters. I don't know if I'm doing it right. right. And so hopefully this is one that um, gets their attention so they can grow in their faith and, and really understand that I do have access to go before the throne of grace and talk to God mm -hmm. and, and listen to Him talk to me. And I think most of us feel that uh, we want to have a good prayer life, but um, there's some questions around prayer to the extent where I think most of us, I think if you were to grab the vast majority of people and say, do you have an amazing prayer life? Mm -hmm. They would be hesitant to answer mm -hmm. that question. Right. You know, I, I love how you start so vulnerably at the beginning of the book. You don't come out swinging saying, I've had an amazing prayer life for 40 years. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you said, um, maybe you can relate. It's not that you don't believe in prayer, you do, but you're stuck in a rut. You pray about the same struggles, the same requests in the same way at the mm -hmm. same time. Um, if you even try to pray at all, mm -hmm. you feel like your prayers just always stay safe. You really aren't sure how, and your prayers are flat, dull, predictable, stale, and boring. And that revelation came off of a friend saying something to you mm -hmm. that it kind of shocked me when I read it. It's like, do you still believe in miracles? Of course good because your prayers are so lame right, right? Yeah, you know yeah. and it's like wow that was the right way to start this book yeah. because i think all of us kind of lean in and we feel that way about our prayers but i would say the number one question that i get about prayer and i would love to ask you this question mm -hmm. um does prayer matter mm -hmm. like do do we pray because we hope we can change god's right. mind to be more in alignment with, with what we really want mm -hmm. Uh, in situations that we have. You know, it's interesting you ask that because even as a pastor, and I've been in ministry for a long time, there are times when I ask myself that. Mm -hmm. Like, does this really matter? It, because it seems like whatever's gonna happen tends to happen. God's gonna do whatever he wants anyway. And I think it, it matters for a lot of reasons, meaning that our faith does 
does touch the heart of God and it, and it honors God. Like if a little child, one of my children, asks me for something, even if I'm going to say no because I know it's not in my, best child, my, my child's best interest, their faith touches me. And there's also, if they're not asking and I'm not responding and we're not communicating, then we don't, really, we don't have a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that prayer is just a transaction where I ask and God does or doesn't do. Um, in the same way in a marriage, you know, I might ask Amy to do something for me and she might say, no, I'm not going to, or she might say yes. And the meaning might not be in the, me getting my desired result, the meaning might be in the conversation. So yeah. does prayer... That's a good example. Does mm -hmm. prayer move God? Yes, it does. It doesn't, it's not the, you know, rub the genie and you get to what you want or put a, the quarters in the machine and push the button and you always get the same yeah. thing. It's not formulaic like that it is relational mm -hmm. and you know, let's say you're praying for somebody you've had a lot of prayers for people you care about right. i always say that your prayers for somebody may or may not change them but your prayers always change right. you yeah and right. so that's kind of the way i see it with god is he may hear my prayers and say yes and do what i'm asking he may hear my prayers and say no he may hear my prayers and say wait and whether it changes what he does or doesn't do it always changes me mm -hmm. to know that I'm surrendering my will to him and yet going before him very boldly and saying mm -hmm. here's what I want God mm -hmm. I believe I believe you can I'm asking you to do it and even if you don't I still believe mm -hmm. you know I was praying about something recently and um, uh, part of what I have to wrestle through in, in in making my heart tender enough to really be able to hear from the Lord in mm -hmm. praying is I feel so utterly confident sometimes, not all the time, but so mm -hmm. utterly confident in some situations what the best outcome would be right? Yes. and what God's will is. Mm -hmm. It just seems so obvious. Mm -hmm. And so I was praying about something recently and it seemed like the more I prayed about it, the more opposite of an answer started to be revealed. And so one day I sat down before the Lord and I just said, I am absolutely absolutely aggravated and and in a state where i just don't even want to talk to you about this anymore because i can so clearly see what's best mm -hmm. and you seem to be instead of shutting this down you seem to be flinging the doors open and i don't understand and i can't say it was an audible voice i don't even want to say this the words were directly from god but this impression that i got on my heart so strongly from the lord is this is my answer to your prayer. I'm not ignoring you. I'm not absent from the situation. I'm answering your prayer, but because it doesn't look like you thought it was gonna look, mm -hmm. you think that I'm not involved. Mm -hmm. I am involved and this is my answer. And so it started me on this process of talk about dangerous prayers, um, trying to look at what is in front of me today and search out, this is an answer, mm. and this is an answer, and this is an answer, because sometimes I find with my prayers, um, I pray, but then I forget to get up from my prayer and realize I've just invited the presence mm -hmm. of God to do life with me, mm -hmm. and I need to get up from my prayers, and I need to look specifically for evidence, um, both that looks like I thought it would, but especially when it's evidence that I know it's God, but it looks so opposite than what right. I so thought good. it would. Right. So good. And mm. to me, that kind of helps bring a dangerous prayer um, full circle mm -hmm. so that it will feed my faith the next time that my answers don't have to look like I thought they mm -hmm. would. I just have to recognize God's activity all around me. To comment quickly on that, uh, Amy got me doing a five-year journal five years ago. And so you, if, if today would be February the 28th, you might, I'd write my prayer request and what I'm going through here. A year later on the same day, I'd journal and I could see what I had prayed for the wow. year before. And what I realized is, oh my gosh, year over year over year, there were answers to prayers yes. that I didn't notice or that were different than what I would experience. And mm -hmm. the, what I started to realize is that 
a year from now, chances are pretty good there will be an answer to the prayer I'm praying on this very day. Mm -hmm. I just can't sense it yet. And it may be incredibly different than what I think, but it did. It gave me a cycle of realizing right. my prayers have been, been answered in ways that I wouldn't have realized right. had I not circled back years mm -hmm. later That's to see. One of our online Bible studies volunteers just sent me a five-year journal. Mm -hmm. Like, I haven't started it yet. But as I was looking through it, that was one of the things. Mm -hmm. I thought, this is really going to be... I can't wait to see how it unfolds you, for that exact what reason. What it'll do is it'll help you to realize that it'll give you faith for what you're struggling with today, that a year from now you will see some sort of Something. resolution, yeah. answer, direction. Right. Yeah, that's what it did for me. Right. That's, that's so great. amazing. Yeah, I love, I, th I love that suggestion. And um, I think a lot of you know the situation I've been through in my marriage, and I know a lot of you are currently walking through really difficult circumstances. And maybe you think, well, this really isn't my season to pick up a book like Dangerous Prayers. I think it's the opposite of that. I think if you're going through something hard, this is the exact right. season where this would be right. the perfect book to... Uh, read and let your words really give us permission to look at prayer maybe in a way that we've never even considered before. Right. And I will say, walking through the really difficult marriage situation that I've walked through, um, I prayed so many prayers that were really suggestions of what I wanted God to do. And probably the biggest lesson that God taught me um, is spend less time suggesting to God how he should work things out and more time asking him to give you the trust and the faith to walk through whatever it is that is before you. Um, I will say my big prayer, my suggestions that I was making were all the things that I wanted God to do to bring my husband back to our family. And uh, looking back, I can honestly say God didn't listen to any of my suggestions, <laughs> not one. And I thought they were really good. <laughs> I kept setting the scene for God to move mm -hmm. because I wanted to be able to see the miracle. And I guess there was a part of me that almost wanted to hurry up the miracle, right? right? Sure. Um, but I also was so afraid that it, things weren't going to look like what I wanted them to look like in the end. And though eventually Art did come home, Things didn't ever look like exactly like I thought they should. They were not on my timing. And he definitely didn't use my opportunities and my suggestions mm -hmm. to set the, the stage for Art to come home because the most my suggestions would have ever done would have just been to change Art's behavior. And God was after rescuing his soul. So good. And only God knew that. Right. So it's not wrong to make suggestions to God. And certainly, you know, when we pray, we do pray four instances, but I think a big lesson I've learned in dangerous prayers is really make the focus of my prayer more about God, give me the courage to face whatever it is that I'm going to face today with your perspective and give me eyes to see your activity in the midst. Right. You just use the word courage and that's what I want to encourage you with. It does take courage to pray dangerously. And, but you can do it. Um, and this is the perfect book to pick up. This is the perfect study to join us mm -hmm. with. We're all going to be doing this together. So let me tell you a little bit about what's inside of the book, Dangerous Prayers. Okay, it's broken up into three parts. Yes. And we're going to spend two weeks on each section of the book. There's Search Me, Break Me. I know, that's the tough one. Break Me and then Send Me. Mm -hmm. And um, so we are excited to take you through that. And every week we're going to have a new video. And I love what we're doing this time because we have different staff members from Proverbs 31, mm -hmm. some different women who are sitting down with Pastor Craig each week to share some heart-wrenching stories, some stories where they're there's something in their life that maybe isn't going the way that they would want it to, kind of like what you just described, but how God is moving in their lives through the dangerous prayers. Mm -hmm. And so um, we want you to come back each week and make sure you check out those videos. Each week is going to be a little bit different. And so, Pastor Craig, I'm real interested to hear what you're going to have to say to the ladies who are going to be joining us over the next few weeks. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm honored just to be a part, and I know that this is a really intimate community that I've heard some of the stories we're gonna talk about in the weeks to come and they're quite emotional. And so I just wanna say thank you for your transparency. Thank you for opening up your lives to other people. There's, 
there's healing on the other side of hurt, mm -hmm. there's, there's strength on the other side of our weakness, and, and there's joy on the other side of sorrow. And I think as, as we learn to pray um, a little more intimately, stretch our prayer lives, maybe break out of what we thought prayer always was, mm -hmm. I'm believing that spiritually you can see just some real life and faith built up. And so I'm, I'm hopeful to see great things in the weeks to come. And I think it's important to encourage you, uh, especially with that word courage, mm -hmm. that on the other side of dangerous prayers is not danger. On the other side of dangerous prayers is the faith and the trust in God that I think we all have always wanted mm -hmm. and never quite knew the path to get there. And so I think this book is going to surprise you the very most with um, what's on the other side of some of these prayers that you say are the opposite of lame and boring. Mm -hmm. And so we've labeled them dangerous <laughs> prayers, but I think right. you're gonna find them so life-giving and so invigorating. invigorating. And I, I can't wait I can't either. to see mm -hmm. what it's happens. Great. Yeah. All right, well, let's get this started. And you guys, we're, we're teaching Pastor Craig how we end all of our times together. Yeah, I'm ready for <laughs> this. Yes, it's something we can, say can around I help? here. Can I you help? can definitely yes. help. Let's break hey, it hey, into three what? parts. Yes, okay. you can definitely help. You're going to hear it every week, but we do believe the Word of God, the Bible, is the truth that you can trust. All of it, every day, all day, for anything that you're going through. Even when you're not going through anything, there is something in there for you. We believe it is the truth, the only place you can really find the truth. And here it goes. Are you ready? Know the truth, live the truth, and it changes everything. everything. That was excellent. Yes, good Very job. Very good. Let's give them a hand. All clap. right. Yes. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody.